Hello and good afternoon and thank you for coming. My name is Joel Hurt and I'm a customer engineer here at Assemble Systems. And I have over 15 years industry experience specializing in 2D and 3D design applications for the power process industry. To kick off our today's session, we'll be going through a quick slide deck and a simple introduction, moving over to a high-level demonstration focusing on data extraction, reporting, workflow creation on the fly, as well as version tracking. So for those of you who don't know who we are, what is Assemble? Well, Assemble is the industry's most efficient cloud-based solution for unlocking collaborative data within your 3D deliverables. As the slide suggests, Assemble is easy as one, two, three. The first thing that needs to be done is that you need to publish your information from your CAD platform into our cloud-based environment. Once that information has been placed in our environment, you can then collaborate, manage, and condition that data and share all of that information across your entire project team. Within Assemble, you can easily navigate your model inventory through our web-based browser, navigating our hierarchy tree or utilizing advanced search sets within our visibility settings, allowing quick and fluid access to all of your model data. Grouping and sorting in Assemble is simple, giving you the ability for creating custom equipment, component, and valve lists on the fly. Assemble also has the unique ability to track changes within your 3D models and gives you the power to compare your model version to version. As we can see here, we have a small list of many of our customers that we're currently working with and at the end of our session today, hopefully you'll want to have your name up here as well. So moving forward into Assemble. As we just spoke about just a moment ago, the first thing that needs to be done is that you need to publish data into Assemble. And once you've done that, you'll have come to what I like to call our Project Collaboration Hub, in which you'll have multiple projects that you can access at any time. You also have the ability to archive any of your legacy models, as well as create new model projects. You also have the ability to access any administrative functionality if you'd like to add or remove users to any project. Once entering an actual project itself, We'll have two sections. We'll have a model section and we'll have a view section. Within our model section, these are all the objects and components that have been pushed over from your CAD platform. Within your view section, it's basically a snapshot in time and you're creating different data sets within your model. For instance, if you just wanted to see all of the valves in a particular section of a model, you can just simply shrink that model down and save that view for all of your valves, components, or equipment. You also have the ability to create multiple workflows within Assemble. For instance, I have a stress analysis section in here, which we'll get into here in just a little bit. If you'd like to create some type of standardization across all of your projects, for instance, if you wanted to create those data sets, you can also share each one of those views across all of your projects within your portfolio. Within this section, you also have the ability to edit projects. If you'd like to add new names or any imagery or colors association, you can do so, adding new members as well. And for our global partners out there, you also have the ability to switch between imperial and metric values on the fly. Within this section, you also have the ability and the symbol uh, to track all of your versions. As you can see here, we only have one version. And this is something that we'll cover here in just a little bit. Diving a little bit deeper into a symbol for CAD works, I have a model open here. And as we can see, it's a pretty decent model here, and it doesn't have any limitation on how large the model is. Since we're a cloud-based solution, we just want the data, and we want to extract that data, and we want to present that data to you. Within this section, we have three main areas. We have our model tree, we have our inventory, as well as our 3D model. To get to some data here, for instance, if I come to piping, we can see all of the nomenclature, the information and components that's been pushed over from CADWorks, everything from check valves to elbows and gaskets, etc. And for instance, if I wanted to take a look at all my butt welded gate valves here, I can just simply select. And as we can see here within our 3D model, we have all of our valves that are associated with this group. They've now been highlighted within our model. If we'd like to see just the valves here, we can simply make an adjustment here within our visibility setting, hide the rest of them, and now we just have the valves that are associated with our group. As we can see here, if we select on one of our items, it takes us directly to it within our inventory. 
I've configured our inventory to reflect our line number, description, size, and weight. And this can be scaled up or down at any time within one of your projects. For instance, if we come to columns, we can add any type of parameter that we'd like to see to create some type of visual representation of the data that's being shown. Now that I've selected a particular valve, if I come over here to my property section, we have two sections. We have assembled properties and we have model properties. Within our model properties, we can see that we have some of the information that's been grayed out. This is all the information that's been pushed over from CADWorks. As we can see here, we have line number associations, we have descriptions, sizes, weights, and tags. And this is grayed out because a symbol hasn't been created to work with specifically that model data. It's been designed to assist and work alongside of it. So for instance, here in the assemble properties here, we've uh, given you multiple fields that you can add uh, different criteria to. For instance, if we have any unit costs that are associated with all of these valves here, we could place in a unit cost and get our total cost for that, or we can simply use a cost code that's been provided by your team. We also have the ability to add any issues or comments, or even send out any lines to scrub, to checker, or out to stress analysis. And this is one of the workflows that I was just mentioning earlier, because a symbol is scalable in which you can create multiple workflows on the fly at any time throughout the entire existence of the project. Clearing out some of our data here, I'm just going to simply update our model. Now we have our full model back here. Within, a, within an actual 3D deliverable, there's so many different uh, uh, items and components that you can look at within the model. So we provided you with multiple ways to search for data. For instance, if we utilize our visibility settings, we can add rules and constraints to this particular model. So for instance, if I come to category and I wanted to look at something by line number, I can simply select line number. And once I go into the tick box, a symbol knows exactly how many lines, what lines have been associated with CADWorks and have been pushed over. So for instance, if I wanted to just pull up a line, for instance, just something arbitrary, let's uh, do this guy here. We'll select update. And now our model's been updated again. And so now we have a full line here in which we can pull additional information from. So for instance, if I come up here, select this guy, and come check my model properties, again, I can see all the pertinent information that's been pushed over from CADWorks. And I know that this is a 90 degree long radius elbow. If I select this entire line list, and we've been highlighted now, I can then kick this out to any type of workflow that I'd like to create. So as you can see here, you can go into a symbol, have your entire model there, and you can sift through all of your data, look at all of your data, and make changes within the assemble properties to work alongside of your data. All of this information can also be exported out into an Excel format to create your custom valve lists, equipment lists, or custom line lists as well. One of the workflows that I was just talking about just a moment ago, I've created in this particular section. As we can see here, I have stress analysis. If I select this guy, we can see that I've made some changes to my inventory here. I've set my inventory to reflect our line number from scrub, checker, and stress, as well as size and issues and comments. Again, if I select any of the components on this particular assembly, I can view all of the information that's associated with it. As you can see here in my assemble properties, I have all the pertinent information that's been married to it. And if I select this line, I can now begin to um, add some more information to our workflow. Say I wanted to kick this out to stress here. For instance, if I come out here to stress, and we just put in 4, 27, 2017, We'll just go ahead and add it to our group here. We'll come down here as well. And we'll do 427 again. And this time I'll put my name on it. So now we're creating some accountability for this particular workflow. I'm going to change my color coding here as well. And this time I'm going to add an issue or comment. So in this way, I'm going to say completion. And let's put it at 100%. 
and we'll add this directly to our issues and comments. We'll save it. And now we can see that we have a change here. We have our color coding as well as a new addition to our stress analysis here. So now if I come back to my visibility settings and I clear this guy out, updating my model, we can see that we have a change. Now that we added in a new data set for this assembly, Assemble knows exactly what to look for. So for instance, if we come over here to our, our issues and comments and I select it, Assemble knows to look for completion at 100%. So you can imagine if you have a workflow in regards to percentages 0 through 100, if you're going through some type of stress analysis and you're saying it's only at 5%, 10%, 20%, etc., Assemble will automatically know exactly what to look for in which you can select completion 100%, update your model, and then you have all of the reflective information here. And again, all the data that you have here in the inventory can also be exported out to Excel, which we'll do now. And as you can see, we've now can created a workflow and kicked it out to Excel. We've got our from scrub, checker, to stress, we have size, and we have completion. But within a symbol, we also have the ability to change data within the Excel format. And there's lots of companies out there that still uh, work in this particular manner. So if we wanted to make a change to this particular data, for instance, and say we wanted to kick this down to 20%, we can do so, make the change, and say we wanted to delete all of this information and kick it all the way back to scrub. We can do so, delete it, we'll save it, and I'm going to save this to my, my, my desktop here, close it out, come back into assemble, and this time what we're going to do is we're just going to import the data. I'm going to simply Choose my file, it's my CAD works file there. Import, accept the changes, and close it out. Now what we can see is that our inventory has been completely blanked out. Our model has been completely blanked out. And that's because a symbol is looking for the completion of 100%, which does not exist anymore because we made the change directly from the Excel document. If we close this guy out, go back in, now we see a completion of 20%. We select it, we update, and now all of our pertinent information that's associated with this particular workflow is back. And as you can see here, we have our scrub, our checker, and our stress has now been removed, and our size and our issues and comments is completion at 20%. So for the first time, we have an unprecedented thing that's going on with an assemble. We have the ability to create an as-built model without the aid of a CAD platform directly from a web-based environment, which is an extremely power, a powerful thing that is happening right now here at Assemble. Lastly, another powerful function that can happen with an Assemble is the ability to track versions. As we can see here, I've got my comparing models. I have uh, version 1 through version 4 here. And underneath my show variance section, I've got my added sections, I've got items that have been removed, et cetera, et cetera. And I can, at any time, create multiple versions of a particular model. It doesn't matter if you're doing quality checks at 10 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. If you want to create 100 different versions of a particular model and track that information that's been changed, you can do so at any time. If I select what's been unchanged, I can then view uh, the changes that have been going on in this particular model versus what's been unchanged. So again, all of the information within my inventory and my quantity changes will then begin to update here in just a moment. As we can see here, we have our unchanged items versus our changed items. And if I select a component here, we can see a variance from A and B. We've added one, and we have one unit right here. This information can also be exported out into Excel, or if you're using Navisworks, all of the information in the data search sets can also be exported out to that area as well.